Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to be going into our third match of Ainley 2 versus Jasper Place 1. Uh, I, I don't know if we want to talk a little bit about what happened uh, yesterday. Unfortunately, Jasper Place 1 was a, a pretty banger of a match. I admit I don't remember a ton of it because we, we all we all seen how bad my memory is. Uh, but uh, Ain, Ainley 2, what's that? You said yesterday again. I said yesterday again. Yeah, it was yesterday, guys. You know, like last no. last Sunday, last Saturday, it's actually just yesterday. The whole week didn't happen. It's actually just a ruse. Don't believe everything you hear. The internet's a lie. Anyway, my <laughs> dumb jokes aside, Ainley 2 uh, being the B team of Ainley, and I think they actually did scrim against Ainley 1 a lot uh, before the tournament. They do actually much similarly like to play that macro game, but in the one game we did see, they did kind of play more of a team fight comp, and they actually focused a little bit more about roaming and forcing fights and actually looking for picks. So I'm kind of curious to see like what, what play style they're going to kind of lean towards and work with that. Uh, and we're just go currently waiting for the uh, pro draft to get started here. Do you have, do you have any uh, early insight you want to drop on chat there, Swanner? Um, I do think that it's, again, it's going to come down to a little bit of engage. It's It's been the, the name of the game recently. If you can get a good engage, uh, it usually sets you up uh, for, uh, for a winning team fight. But as we saw in the last game, Counter engage is also really important as well. If if the initial engage just fails, you have to be able to respond to that uh, really well. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's interesting too. Thing you gotta reflect that. If you are playing the team fight comp, you need to be either even with them or ahead in order to get engages. Because even as beautiful as that wombo comp was in that fight. Oh. If you don't have the damage, you, you just don't win. But we got an early Bar Darius ban coming out of here looking to not uh, let the top lane get hands on that very, very strong pick at this point. And actually, a Hecarim ban coming out. Hecarim, I think Hecarim and Kaisa have been the most frequent champions we've seen on stream so far. Yeah, it's and usually Hecarim is paired up with the Kaisa as well, making sure that you, you have two champions that can dive in together. And we're also seeing an Urgot ban. I do believe um, someone for mainly two was... Uh, probably the top laner, <laughs> it is the top laner who was practicing Urgot a lot, and just banning them, just limiting, uh, taking away that power pick from them. Yeah, pretty crucial too. And a new deer ban coming out, they're looking to deny uh, Jasper plays from getting hands on any of the speed junglers early <laughs> on, which do tend to be in the meta, really utilizing... Uh, 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 Blanking on names, Chemtan, yes. They just utilize the early game gank potential, but also be able to just zoom around the map, get objective controls, and usually the, the faster champions too also just, you know, have faster jungle clear because they got to fit their own theme. So actually, a Yorick ban, I think that might be a target ban for pulling out here, and an Azir ban is interesting because I don't think we've seen a lot of Azir, but that also maybe might be a target ban. Yeah, I'm also surprised because Azir, even though he does have really good, um, just, uh, he's really safe in uh, the, during the laning phase, uh, I do his his early game did get nerfed a little bit, so I'm surprised that uh, Jasper Place did choose to ban this champion. But that being said, Kaisa, we've seen a lot of her, and she's she's back again. You ban the Hecarim, you leave the Kaisa open, and that's a good early uh, first pick to pick up. I mean, we we reflected on the Kaisa just many times of her just being so versatile. You can run her in dive comps, you can run her in like she's so versatile like and so scaling. strong at this point. Yeah, like a counter engage, like really, you have a comp. Just, just slap the Kaisa in it. She's probably going to work with it. And actually, at least ban pick. I mean, I'm going to at least ban. At least pick early up on Ainley 2 here. Kind of showing that maybe they do want to play around that early game. I think they did. They play. Uh, I think they played at least in their previous game that we saw on stream. I will check. Uh, but I do think that there is an Elise somewhere in there. I. In the game we got a Galio we pick up yeah. here as well. So I think that's going to give Ainley 2 a lot of uh, jungle mid. Um, just, you know, gank potential they can roam around. So I think I think a crucial thing we're going to need to watch is that jungle uh, mid duo as they kind of rotate around the map and make plays. And a thresh picked up here to kind of keep the Kaisa safe, safe rather, and kind of allow engages and stuff down there in the bot lane. Just a very very good pickup to go with the Kaisa and even enables roams and stuff like that up in the mid lane. Yeah, and also uh, in the last game we were expecting a Galio go into the mid lane, but we saw the uh, the Galio being flexed uh, as a support. So the, the, this flex pick can go either way. It can, but that being said, it can set up the Elise really well as well. She can, she can have a cocoon. She can go in, have the Galio back her up as well. And we're seeing an Oriana come out from Jasper Place. This is, again, it's she's gonna be able to protect this Kaisa going in, throw uh, throw on the ball onto her, get the shockwave up uh, really well. And Amy too, they're going for a Kled. This is interesting. 
Yeah, I think it's, it's going to see a, a ton of pressure up in the top lane, particularly towards split push, but also Kled does enable your team to team fight very easily because of this charge. Not only Let's does go. he make just himself in. run in, he speeds up everyone on your team as well to go in, which is actually very good on a Galio because you can just get the engage without having to invest in E or anything like that, and at least can look for Coons. And then Goo got the Skarner ban coming out here. They're probably going to look mostly towards bans on the side of Ainley, just because that has been picked up by Jasper, and also the 80 carry ban is probably going to come out against Ainley too, because that, or their uh, mid laner yet, uh, or sorry, their support quite yet. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm expecting a Jinx ban <laughs> coming up from Jasper Place, or maybe just um, another support ban uh, if Galio does not go into the support role, uh, Leona or uh, Nautilus ban. Uh, we saw how Zaya was able to respond really well in uh, those team fights because of her ultimate, she was able to uh, survive line up her feathers really well yeah and then malphite uh being banned malphite even though he he's kind of this uh w lose lane gracefully champion and in the team fights just press r you've done your job yeah Thumbs and malphite up. would definitely fit into the jasper plays comp quite comfortably too with the oriana shockwave combo mm -hmm. kaisa engage after that or even like thresh going in like they have a lot of ways to get around and go in using malphite so I think that was a good ban coming up for mainly two, and it looks like they're going towards the Nautilus, which will give them a little bit of precedence in the mid lane here, but also maybe open up ganks and stuff like that into the mid lane. Yeah, uh, and then uh, the Nautilus mm -hmm. pick is confirming that Galio will be going into the mid lane <laughs> against this Oriana. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very safe lane for the Galio. He does get poked out a bit early by the Oriana, but you kind of just max the W shield, and then you just don't really take a lot of damage anymore. So the Oriana may look to either just like from that uh, kind of damage advantage or maybe roam around the map and stuff like that but she's going to really look to keep the Galio in the lane or if he does make roams and stuff like that look to respond by either pushing in the turret and taking stuff oh and an Orn picked up Orn. by Jasper Place here I am, I am a big fan of Orn I think because not only is he a very very strong tank that can trade pretty effectively in lane and stuff like that except into some of his worst matchups but he also just gets value simply by existing out of his passive. Because <laughs> even if you're not doing so hot, you hit level 14 and un above, you just get to upgrade your items on the on your team, give them value that your enemy team can't compete with because I mean, you have to have Orn to have it, obviously. So he's a very consistent pick and very easy to work around. And with the Jarvan coming here, I think we've got Jasper Place pretty much confirming they want to play kind of a, a mostly by comp, a little bit of pick potential on the side. Yeah, Jar uh, Jarvan pair, uh, being paired up with the Orin Oriana, it's just a really good combination. Uh, as you said, Jarvan uh, can um, is able to uh, have these team, uh, really good team fights, locking up uh, a lot of people with his ultimate. But there is an escape. Tristana, uh, which is picked for Ainley, she does have her rocket jump, and she can escape a lot of this uh, initial engage. Yeah, exactly. So it allows them to deny a lot of the initial gates from Jasper Place. So I think Jasper Place, we kind of alluded to, kind of a like a, just a team fight comp, as pure and as simple as it can get. Not a ton of side wave pressure unless the Kaisa or maybe the Oriana gets very far ahead. But you have a very, very solid team fight. You can fight our objectives quite well and you get a lot of value just to simply out of the Orn existing. But I think we should touch on Ainley too. Maybe if you want to explain to chat kind of like what they what they work around, what are their strengths, how do they and what, what lanes maybe should they prioritize? I definitely do think that they want to get this uh, top laner ahead, uh, get the Kled ahead, be and just utilize Elise's strong early game uh, to the best of their ability. Because uh, Elise, uh, if she doesn't get much done in the early game, she somewhat falls off uh, late in the later stages, and her only useful ability then becomes the Cocoon. But that being said, she does have a lot of pick potential in the side lanes. Uh, if she pairs up with this Kled, uh, maybe picking off uh, the Kaisa or the Oriana, if th because how squishy uh, they are. Yeah, I think, I think Ainley too gets a lot of like side uh, lane pressure as well. Like obviously, simply from the Kled, Tristana, which is how quickly she can melt turrets. If you just leave her alone, oh, yeah. she'll, she'll just sit there. Melt your turret completely because say maybe Jasper Place is going for I don't know, a Rift Herald top or something like that, and they kind of ignore uh, bot lane for a little bit. That's pretty much a free turret take for Tristana just because of how easily she can melt through it, particularly when she starts getting into her mythic and even second item power spike. Even like level one with the E, it's quite a lot, but when she starts getting that attack speed online, she just absolutely rips through these turrets. So Ainley does have a lot of side pressure they can work on, and if they do manage to snowball ahead with the Elise properly, they are going to be able to negate that kind of wombo combo like we've seen in the last game that Jasper Place has, and then just go back in because they have decent counter engage not as much as we've seen in the last time but the galio can deny a lot of that gauge nautilus can uh, counter engage quite well and then kled can also just run his entire team at them so if you see ainley get ahead 
going to see a lot of proactive plays from the Kled where he just will charge down a lane, pull his team with them, and they'll just use, basically just slap the opponents with their wallets uh, just because <laughs> of how far ahead they are in damage items. But I think we're going to think we're going to have to really pay attention to the uh, the jungle matchup because, as you said, the Elise does fall off while the Jarvan does tend to maintain uh, relevancy for most of the game. So if Elise can get ahead, get her lanes uh, rolling, it's going to be a very difficult game for Jasper plays to play around. Yeah, Tristana as well. Uh, you were talking about how uh, Amy does have uh, some responses to the engage of Jasper place. Tristana also has a buster shot, her ultimate, which can just push everyone away and th which gives her a lot of survivability, creating the space that she wants to be able to uh, get off her damage. Yeah, exactly. So it's a good combo coming out. And I think, I think we should look at it now too. So maybe we should look at these lanes. Which lanes are going to be pushing in early, which are going to be kind of at a disadvantage and where they play around like just kind of break down each lane and just talk about uh like which lane do you think you're going to push in and maybe why should the team play around that particular lane well uh, starting from the top lane Kled versus orin i do Kled is probably going to have uh, the advantage over orin unless if or i remember just seeing orin uh being this assassin in like early uh early on this year but i don't think that's we're going to be uh seeing that happen at all this uh in this tournament so I do think that Cloud is going to be able to push in this Orin, kind of bully him in the early game, make sure that he can get uh, an advantage. Uh, going down into the mid lane, Orion, as he said, is going to have the initial uh, mid lane push. He's going to be able to poke out the Galio a little bit, but as he said, uh, Galio can just max his W, uh, make sure th uh, that he gets some of the shield. And it should all it should be just smooth sailing from there and Galio he wants to be able to push out the lane to get to, into the side lanes to be able to possibly even dive uh either his bot lane or the top lane making sure that his side lane is also get ahead that being uh moving on into the bot lane i do think that tristana even though kaisa does have pretty good wave clear just from uh tristana's passive on her e she's gonna have the bot lane push and that's going to be able to uh, allow, uh, give space for this Elise to kind of do what she wants, to kind of gank whichever lane she, uh, she desires to, giving her a lot of space as well. Yeah, and I think uh, the early scuttle take, I know I've been like a rattling on about Every this single game. <laughs> every single game. I think it's just how important it is, but actually I think this game you're going to see a, a decision. Like, assuming the Elise doesn't manage to get the double scuttle off because of some good lane pressure and stuff like that, if she decides to offer the the top one early, you're gonna kind of maybe see that they're they're tending towards trying to get their Kled ahead and play around that win condition. Or if she takes the bottom one, they're likely prioritizing dragons, uh, getting their bot lanes uh, snowballing stuff like that. Because with the early Tristana push in the bot lane, you can very easily transition into dragon takes and stuff like that. Because you're pretty much as long as your Tristana and Nautilus aren't significantly behind. They're always going to have the bot lane push simply because that's just what Tristana does, as you alluded to with her her E passive. So you're, you're going to see a lot of that prior where they might choose to play around that dragon. But if Lee decides to opt to more towards top lane and stuff like that, they're going to go for that just hard Kled carry. Because if Kled gets ahead of this Orn, because uh, Orn, as you said, early game is Sazzy. Yeah, not <laughs> he's anymore. a punching he, bag. He, he's actually he's actually a little bit weak now. He, I think he still trades way too effectively, but it's definitely not as bad as you know on release or for the, uh, when the uh, jungle items first came out. So if they do get this Kled ahead, he can kind of just abuse this Orn and you know it's, it's generic as it sounds, make him not have a good time. And also, I think a lot more precedence over Jarvan in the early game. They both have a ton of like early game burst damage and stuff like that. But I think Elise just has like the slight edge, uh, just with Cocoon. I think being a little bit more effective than the flat. Yeah, one thing that I, uh, I do realize is uh, how much uh, att uh, attack damage that Anley have. Uh, Elise is kind of their primary uh, is the primary AP AP champion if Galio doesn't go for the AP route. So Orin is going to have uh, it's going to be able to easily itemize to counter some of this Tristana and this Kled damage. Yeah, just go into the armor and stuff like that. Maybe pick up like an early Bramble or uh, some of the uh, stronger early game uh, yeah. <clears throat> armor items. But I think it's going to be interesting to see which, um, like how the Galio turns out. Because I feel like if the Galio gets ahead, it's going to give Ainley 2 just so much precedence in this early game. Because they're already playing around this comp where they want to snowball the game in their advantage, keep their lanes ahead and push when they're strong early. Because if Jasper Place does manage to just um, 
scale up and be at the same level as Ainley 2, they kind of just win in a straight up team fight, assuming they don't mess up their engage. Because much like you see in the last game, like when Wombo Combo works, it does a ton. Because you have so many <laughs> ways to enable this Oriana ball to go in. You have the Orin ult that drops down, basically sets up a free Orion ult. You have the Jarvan jumping in. I mean, I think my favorite combo to this is Orin. You hit them all up with the Orin ult. It makes them all uh, brittle. Then you do the Jarvan ult and then Orion ult into that. And then Kaisa just has a heyday. Uh, if they're even alive at that point. But if Jasper Place gets behind, that engage actually really doesn't do a ton of damage. And then they're going to be able to just re-engage with this Galio, this Nautilus, and even maybe the Kled to a point if he's nearby or in the team fight already. And then just Tristana damage is just going to go off the roof. So Jasper Place needs to make sure this game doesn't snowball out of control because they do have a little bit of a weaker early game laning phase. And they need to avoid Ainley being able to just be ahead of them because they need to be able to win team fights. And if you get behind in the team fight comp, life is just not, not good. Yeah, it's definitely it's they're gonna definitely have a, a hard time uh, if they do get behind with this te team fight composition because they just won't have the damage uh, to back up their amazing engage. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears> hmm. <throat> I, I think it's gonna be interesting to see like how they want to opt into this Thresh as well because that's actually another engage I didn't talk on. Thresh can also just. Uh, Q, e Q. and then Q, drag into it, and then you got another Oriana set up. So this is pretty much the deliver the ball into the middle of the enemy team comp, how however you wish. Like, you, got, you got so many options. Oh, there's also the meaty one. I got, I got this is this is my favorite one. You, you, you get you know, Kaisa <laughs> alt in the middle of their team, and then Oriana alt. It, it's so oh, funny because yeah. they don't they don't expect it. Because why why would your Kaisa your your fragile lady carry just alt in the middle of the enemy team, then you Oriana alt, you Jarvan alt, and you drop everything, and then they kind of just wonder what happened. It's it's a very funny engage, but it also can be very effective because it can really take your opponent by surprise. And also with just a long range ability of Kaisa to engage like that, as long as your Oriana's in the right position, you can, that that engage can actually be quite potent. Yeah, I do think that, uh, that being said, though, I think that Thresh uh, in these team fights will not be the primary engage because he wants to use his lantern to be able to save some of his members if they do get caught in a sticky situation or if they take too much damage, making sure that it's just so that they could stay alive. Yeah, crucially with the Lantern, just able to pull people out, but also the Flay really just denying a lot of the Galio engage. Because yeah, Galio maybe is looking for that taunt, you just Flay him away, it cancels his taunt early, and then maybe he doesn't manage to get the taunt down onto the Kai'Sa. Or if the Nautilus goes in, you just knock him away. So there's a lot of options you can play around with the Thresh there. But yeah, I think Thresh is gonna, definitely going to be on that peeling duty outside of situations where that hook is just too free. Yeah, and you can... <laughs> that is a lot of things from... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> go mid, go mid, go mid! <laughs> Yeah, that. Oh my. Yeah, they're yeah, just setting can, up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see how Ainley too. They're already looking to uh, set up, the, uh, making sure that there is no early invade uh, from Jasper Place, making sure that there's no level one shenanigans that are able to happen. Yeah, it's a good thing to do too. And also you can see they're utilizing the Oriana ball to drop in there. Yeah, a lot of teams have dropped a ward in that middle bush there to watch out for ganks and stuff like that. But Oriana doesn't really need to invest in using her early ward and she can opt to put it somewhere else. Just by using the ball there, just like leave it there. You get full vision on that part of the river and you're completely safe during that ordeal. So a really wise choice there, but actually see the opposite of it. You got Ainley on the other side dropping the ward in the uh, tri bush there. Maybe looking up for vision to watch for engages, but also to a, sweeper, I think. <clears throat> a big yes, thing I you can see. This. Oh, he switched to the sweeper too, man. It's just too big bring plays. Yeah, it, like even uh, early jungle, getting some early vision in the jungle is going to be important uh, in kind of tracking the jungler, but also denying uh, the vision as well. Denying the vision uh, from the wards is going to allow this Elise to uh, just take uh, her opponents by surprise because she does want to get off these early games. And if the uh, if the team does if her opposing team does not have vision. That is more important than having vision yourself. Yeah, exactly. And also just being able to deny that ward and stuff like that. Because a lot of the, as you alluded to, the, the early game wards are kind of meant to spot your jungle, the enemy jungler. So you know what path they're taking. So you can kind of understand if like, oh, maybe they're going to go for bottom scuttle. Maybe they're going to go for this. And you understand like which path they're going to. And you can kind of predict ganks. You can predict objective takes. And it's just a very important thing in the early game, particularly when you have a pushing lane, like maybe like the bottom lane with the Tristana and stuff like that, where you need to be able to understand where the enemy jungler is to like, know know how to play your lane correctly because with the tristana you're going to kind of push it's just it's just how it is if you know where the enemy jungler is you can play responsibly and then maybe not get that early game gank go down early and just not have a good time but actually you know as i'm alluding to that they're actually letting the kaisa push in with how the uh, tristana is last hitting instead of just letting her passive do the work you know yeah they yeah they're going to uh just have a little bit farm and deter it will she get all the cs 
Oh, this, I think she missed <laughs> one. That was very <laughs> close. No, you're not, you're not caught on that last one. The passive is kind of screwing her over there. Oh, wait, but... wait. She got 12. So I think she did get all of oh, them. Oh, she did get it? It's, it's too good. Forgot the perfect CS who's coming out here. Uh, we got early, I think, oh, we got an early game gauge down in the bot lane. Level all two. the damage coming down. Yeah, the level 2 just so potent with the Tristana. The jump going down. Ignite investing. That is an early kill onto the Kaisa to get this Tristana rolling. And they're probably going to pick up the fresh here. But a point of the turret, the flay coming down. It has to invest the flash to get out. But that is a, that is a kill going down onto, that, onto the Tristana early on. And unfortunately, Nautilus getting one of there as well. But that is where how you want to start that uh, bottom lane for Ainley 2. Yeah, I think that uh, Tristana and Nautilus did hit the level two uh, just a just a little bit before Kaisa. And Tristana level two is very strong. You have the rocket jump of uh, uh, just c c uh, heck me right now. <laughs> just no, it's uh, all good. Yeah, paired up with oh, he the... stole it. <laughs> oh, it's so mean. Oh, my... yeah, he stole it. Oh wait, no, the Jarvan's oh. on the red team, guys. Dumb. I thought I Wait, what? The I thought the no, Jarvan is on the blue team. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, no, that was my mistake. Uh, I thought the uh, I, I blanked for a second. I'm like, wow, the Jarvan's on the blue team. <laughs> the Clint stole it, but no, I'm completely wrong. Oh, but we got an engage going down oh. onto the Elysia, the lockup, and the shield going down, and they're just gonna get a little bit of poke here and force the Elise out of the Jarvan's jungle. Actually, the Elise versus Jarvan matchup going pretty evenly so far, kind of staying even on CS, but the Elise does have a slight level lead. Yeah, this Tristana is going to uh, be a problem in the late game but more than the Kai'Sa, I think. Because as Tristana levels up, she's going to have more and more range. She's going to be able to escape a lot of these engages uh, from from the Orianna, from the Jarvan. And she's going to be able to just play safely. And we saw, uh, what I was trying to say is that her le Tristana's level 2 is very strong. Has the rocket jump. Uh, pair, pair that up with her uh, E. And that's just a lot of damage. Like I don't, yeah. I don't think the Kaisa and Thresh is able to match match up with that. And we saw how they weren't able to match up with that. At least yeah, it looks it's like they're coming back for a gank on the bottom lane here. I don't think Blue's seen them. And a huge hook coming down from the Nautilus. The lockup coming down. They got massive damage going on the Kaisa early. It looks like the Kaisa's gonna fall. Oh, but the kill goes over towards the Nautilus, unfortunately. But just huge damage coming down from the Tristana and the Elise gank early, and that's gonna give them Pryo onto the dragon to take this. Setting the dragon at five minutes. This is. We're not having a cloud soul. <laughs> We're not having a cloud soul, but that's that's good. Um, good early game pressure by the Ainley. But actually, going back on my mistake earlier, uh, with giving the gold onto the uh, Kled early, it kind of shows they're prioritizing getting some gold and stuff like that onto the Kled to just continue that push up in the top lane. Because not only did they get the um, I. Oh no, oh. wait, he did steal it. Uh, okay, anyway, you know what? I, I'm gonna ignore myself and focus on this bottom lane play where Tristana did get killed here. I got myself all mixed up, and it is. You know, we're just gonna completely ignore that play. We're gonna say, wow, good job, Ainley. That's a sick dragon. I'm gonna get back on topic. So, how do you think, Ainley, like, it looks like Ainley 2 is kind of taking an early game lead. They got lots of pressure. They're up almost, they're oh, nearly 2k gold here. How do you think they want to play around this and ensure that they manage to win the game off of this and keep it going? Uh, oh, well, right now, I do, I do think that they just need to make sure that nothing else happens around the map make sure that they do not uh get gank uh get ganked and die through these ganks uh, anymore another thing is that th they probably would want to kind of focus on some this team fights uh capabilities that they have so using the oriana uh ball her shockwave when they do come through these team fights using their strong engage with uh I do not know the name of Orin's ultimate, but his use just to force some of these fights when Ainley are not ready. Exactly. And it looks like we got the lane swap coming out from Ainley too, moving the bot lane into the mid lane here. Uh, kind of looking for the Rift Herald spawn and just to keep the pressure up because Keely, uh, notely, the Galio does have the teleport in the bot lane, so does Orianna. But they can afford, like, by this moving. This is a very early switch, though, that's why. Thank it you. is an early switch, but I think because of where the lane was pushing in, they pushed the lane all the way up in the bottom, and then they rotated their Tristana up to mid lane to just get the CS as soon as they could, because their Tristana is snowballing right now, and they want to keep that snowball going as far. Unfortunately, two of the kills have gone over towards the Nautilus, so the gold isn't spread exactly how they want, but their bot lane is very, very strong. But we got a gank going oh, no. up from the Jarvan here, but you can't really hit the uh, Tristana <laughs> with the W here and just cleanly escapes from that. And the Galio is going to be able to hold the bot lane down here, 
and just CS for free, and then get, they're gonna keep snowballing this Tristan. I think it's interesting to see them do this because it's gonna just make their hyper carry so, so strong. And with the engage that they have from the Kled, the Galio, and even the uh, stun from the Elise, I think they're gonna be able to keep this Tristan rolling, and that actually might just be the win condition they wanna fully commit to now. Yeah, I was just thinking of this more carefully. Galio, he, I don't think you're gonna have kill pressure on the Galio this early on through the game. And every single time that I keep talking, there's more fighting. <laughs> it's fighting up at the top, but I don't think you're gonna quite kill the Meatbag Orn quite yet. But it looks like, the, the actually, key thing too is you notice that because also got the mid laners and i mean the bot lane moved to the mid lane this um nautilus is free to free to roam around so they're going to set up rift herald here they got counter jungle coming up because they have the nautilus to enable this it's actually just such a i think a good play because as you said yeah the galio can't be like killed by the bottom lane quite yet but also just freeing up his support from the mid lane so it's easy to roam through the other lanes and just be impactful it's, it's just so so smart mainly too here yeah, the problem of, uh, you, you can see how they're kind of splitting the map right now. Galu is playing the weak side, uh, while Ainley 2, they're using this top and mid pressure that they have with this bottom lane, uh, just uh, having the lane swap. More fighting, and- More fighting? I don't know, I think I should might be- No, not not quite. One more cool. auto would have killed from the ignite burning down oh. here. Oh, but the guy didn't know he had charge! That's a huge <laughs> kill of being picked up by Clut up here in the top lane. That's really not what you want to see happen, because not only does he have a massive CS advantage, that's a kill going down, and this lane only gets harsher and harsher. But we got a gauge going down the mid lane. Go it's just non-stop fighting, but actually just a little poking going down onto the uh, Koriana. A little too close to turret to fully commit to that fight. Yeah, uh, you can see how uh, Jarvan over there was trying to uh, get something back by counter jungling. But oh, you have a looking wasn't... for the early engage here to pull the mid lane down, but it's the rotation coming down. We got the ignite invested on it, but they're so out of position. It's just down to the they got the lantern coming down. The pressure's looking for the play, but gets the last gets the hook onto the threat. And he got the Jarvan out locking them down. The Kaisa is kiting back. A huge Oriana ult knocks down the Tristan under the tower. And that only can take one more turret shot. The Galley ult for the re-engage and dies oh, no. to the turret shot. And that is actually a one no a one for two trade in the favor of Ainley, but a very scrappy fight and not very well executed on either. <laughs> Their side. <laughs> no, there are definitely a lot of mis-executions from both sides, but overall, that is a lot- I'm just realizing that is a lot of flashes flown on the side of Ainley. I the release, Galio, Tristana, Nautilus, all of them don't have flash anymore, and uh, I'm also just realizing this. Kled also went Ignite TP, so he also doesn't have a flash. So yeah. in, uh, when, in the upcoming uh, fight for, dra uh, for the dragon, uh, for the ocean dragon, which I do believe. Observer, can we check on that? Yep, it is an ocean dragon. They're not going to have a lot of responses uh, to, to the uh, to Oriana Shockwave, which uh, should be up pretty soon. Also, a, a thresh count. Uh, I, why can't I talk today? <laughs> a a thresh hook flash. either. <laughs> yeah, so they're not going to have a lot of the uh, escapes. Yeah, coming down to, and you see that the vision is kind of solely in control of Jasper Place on the bottom line here, just simply because uh, Ainley doesn't have any wards here, but they're getting the Rift Herald down. We've seen this actually from the other, other Ainley team, where they're dropping the Rift Herald mid, forcing them to be here and deal with it, so they can set up a really easy take onto the Dragon. And this one, I think, a little bit more better executed than the last time we see it, but does die very early, so they're actually going to be able to rotate on the fight, and I just jinx the heck out of it. But I don't, they don't have the Jarvanol, they don't have the Orion coming in, so I think this might be a very difficult fight for them to take. I think they're probably I, just going to go for a smite steal here. I think here. they should pull it out. They should pull yeah, the yeah. dragon out just to make sure. Yep. Oh. Yeah, because Oriana Shockwave just came oh. up and so did Jarvan also. I think we're actually going to see a big team fight coming down here, but they locked down the Jarvan for too long. Can't grab the Lantern, can't ult. That's a big pickup coming down for Ainley too, but we got the Clen Engage coming down, looking for that low health Oriana, but the Nautilus off Keely coming down, Thresh's, oh man, this is the man trying his best to save him, but I think the, uh, no, they're not going to opt for it. And Thresh sacrifices his life to get Oriana out of there, but Oriana's got to keep running away. That Clen is going to tower dive you. Yeah, Oriana, she was not able to participate in the fight because Tristana go got the explosive uh, explosive bomb onto her and just chunked the Oriana down so much. And something to know is that or not having TP was not a part of that fight at all. So the uh, Jasper Place were lacking the crucial engage that might have turned the fight in the favor. Yeah, the other thing we saw too is because they did lock up the Jarvan so so hard, he wasn't able to ult, he wasn't able to get out with the Thresh Lantern, but we've seen the effect of the Jarvan ult in that kind of first scrappy fight, where he actually locked three of them up in the tower and managed to get his Kai'Sa to be able to kite back and do as much damage as possible before the fight even happened. Where in this one, they just completely locked him down, let him, didn't let him do anything, and it just completely swayed the fight for them. So I think a very key thing is like, yes, the Wombo Combo on Jasper Place is very strong, but there's actually 
ton of single target lockdown that you don't might not be able to see on Ainley through like the Galio taunt, taunt into Nautilus hook, into stun, Elise into Roof, and at least Cocoon right after that. So you can layer these in a way that denies them from being able to use their big team fight alts early on if they're able to react uh, appropriately. So it's gonna be a lot of little engages like that by Ainley here, but I think Ainley is probably just gonna like focus kind of on their cross map pressure here because they have an extremely fed Elise. Their Kled is stream rolling ahead, and most importantly, I think is this Tristana is just incredibly strong right now. Yeah, Ainley, they're already at um, about a 5,000 gold lead at 13 minutes into the game. And you can see where this uh, gold is kind of concentrated onto the uh, onto the spot lane and onto uh, the jungler that they have. Uh, Elise being over a thousand gold ahead, uh, Tristana just being a little bit over a thousand gold ahead. Same with, uh, th same with Kled in the top lane as well. So they do, uh, they're just accelerating this lead that they have, yeah, and, and that's a burst! And that is a burst damage, that's what happens there. So a lot of jungler matchups are quite like this, but Elise, uh, I think Elise, Hecarim, Kha'Zix, I think is a great example of this too, where if your enemy jungler does get significantly behind you, you can just walk in their jungle 1v1, like just burst them instantly, and then just start stealing all their jungler. And you're gonna see a lot of this as the game goes on, if they don't push in the towers very early here, because the Elise just has basically precedence over the entire map right now. Because not only are all the lanes pushing in the form of Ainley, they have the superior vision cover and stuff like that. Their jungler is so far ahead of the Jarvan right now that he can just go in the jungle. But we got a Kled engage going into the mid lane here. A huge oh. shotgun shotgun coming down, but just look at how much damage this Kled does. That's going to be the lucky for the shock. Oh, a huge shotgun blast from downtown. But they are going to be able to melt down the Kled and get some shutdown gold. But now, oh, the big flash onto the Elise and the Galliol's coming down, trying to turn this fight, trying to save it. A big repel coming down. And they're looking for the. Oh, the beak range! And they're going to be able to get the kill on the Kaisa here. The heal committed, but just not quite enough. A huge chunk coming on the Galio. I thought we might see a third re-engage there, but wisely don't go for it, knowing they are down in numbers. Yeah, at least using the repel effectively just to uh, avoid the damage uh, that would have come out and killed her. And you can see just Tristana just melting this turret in the side lane, uh, giving her more, more gold. And you can see how she already has her... Uh, her mythic item, while Kaisa is still sitting on that Noon Quiver, same with the Orianna, still sitting on that Lost Chapter. Th their carries are very far behind in this game. Uh, and Aimly too. They should be winning every single fight that they go into just because of how big this gold lead is. It's yeah, already at 7,000. Yeah, because even if Jasper plays does their uh, they're engaged like perfectly, I think you're gonna see exactly what happened last game. We're gonna hit this combo, wombo combo, it's gonna look sick, but it's not gonna kill anybody. And then Ainley's just gonna turn around, just you realize how far ahead they are, just turn the fight just simply on raw damage numbers. And also just this precedent in the jungle here, they just have complete control of neutral objectives. Cause like, they can probably take Riftile for free if they want. They're probably gonna mo most likely gonna set up for this dragon that's coming up in the bot lane instead. Or you know, why not both? Yeah, why not both? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, why not both? Right now, uh, the main objective that is spawning uh, is the Rift Herald, and you can see how Elise is pinging over there, uh, also calling over her bot lane as well to cover her, having the Nala list come over to the mid lane, Tristana push out the top lane, Kled having teleport in the bot lane as well, just very good lane assignments. Yeah, well, and a more, more fighting! Down, gets a taunt onto that, a huge splash cocoon coming up from the Elise, and that's just perfect execution on the side of Ainley too. Getting down the damage, pulls her back under the tower, but it's not going to quite be enough, and that was just a beautiful taunt into flash cocoon coming down from Ainley to get a free pick on to the them securing their objective and also crucially they have a control ward on the dragon it's not likely that jasper place is going to go for a trade with just the loss of their ad carry there but they can see if they do opt to go for that uh uh dragon i've got a little bit fighting on the bot lane they're knocking up it. onto this kled the kled is pulling her back you're gonna look for this 2v1 outplay but the, the just so much cc on the side of jasper place here just melting down the kled and the kled is likely going to fall here but not going to fight but the river man he's too strong got the knock up onto him and I think the Kled is finally going to fall, and the Galio is a little out of position here on the TP. The Kled not living quite as long as he wants, but they're committing four people to this, and they might actually be able to win on the back end. There's so much time wasted by uh, Ainley. But I think actually Ainley, too, if they do execute this right, which is how strong the Tristana is, they may be able to win this fight, but I don't think they're going to take it, because that is a, a tad bit risky. Nope, but they got the pick onto the early pick onto the Thresh, and yeah, no, they can fully engage into this. This is exactly how they need to play. Early lockdown gets the kill onto the Tristana with Orianna, and that is just a massive outplay by the Tristana. Tristana here, the Thresh overstepped the boundary, needed to be there to peel for the supports, and instead just gets caught by the Nautilus, and that's Tristana just cleaning up the fight while Elise zones on the back, back end of it. Yeah, so even though Ainley do, they are able to get this dragon, that all started with uh, uh, Jasper Place trying to get a pick onto this Kled, while even though they did uh, eventually get it, 
Sledge just bought so much time with the remount, which allowed his teammates uh, to kind of come over. And Tristana, with her, the lead that she has, 4 0 and 5 right now with the Kraken Slayer and the, uh, building towards the next. I, Building towards the next item already. She just has so much power in these team fights, and she was able to melt so fast. I think it's going to come down to as well that the now you can just throw the Nautilus or even just you on it. I mean the Tristana by herself to a point in a side lane, and you can just shove up waves and stuff like that. And you now have two effective split pushers in the form of the Kled and the Tristana if you want to kind of wear away at them slowly or you can just opt to go for full team fights because you see like that there they, it was a 3v1 but they were able to turn it around because there was crucial cooldowns unfortunately Jasper Place did misstep but I think you might see them kind of slowly wheel them away pushing around late wanes, uh, lanes rather and just kind of focusing on setting up for these objectives and stuff like that because there aren't a lot of neutral objectives up right now as I don't maybe like Rift Scuttle and stuff like that so I think you're going to see a lot of lane pressure coming out from this Tristana or they're going to force Jasper Place to group on them and just take a fight but I don't think there will be one unless there's a really good pick because there is no neutral objective to really fight over because uh baron is only up in like a minute so and then mountain soul is also really good uh for these split pushes because they're gonna have this extra they're gonna have this extra shielding and yeah, but speaking of here, pick, we go. here is one coming down onto the oriana big cocoon and you just see how much single target cc they have you can't be stepping there when they have the vision and that's the oriana going down and they, as I said, there's not a lot of neutral objectives up right now for them to transition this into, but instead they're going to go for lane pressure, push it up, because if Jasper Place does try to contest them at any points in the map, they're just going to take so much more on another side of the map. Yeah, right now, Aaron is going to be spawning very, uh, just in under a minute. And I wouldn't be surprised to see if Ainley 2 were to go for that Baron, just because of how much, how far ahead they are. Phantom Dancer completed for the Tristana. Plus, yeah, honestly, they're just so far ahead. I don't know if there's anything else I could say. Well, I, I think you're correct, though, because they're probably going to set up for this Baron. They're going to leave the Kled bottom lane to push up because I honestly, I think they can take the 4v5 if they execute it properly. And the Kled can just keep pushing bottom. And if they really, really need him, he just TPs Teleport. in and turns the fight around. Uh, but also, crucially, they're also pushing up the top lane. You see all the prep Ainley is putting into these waves because they know the Baron is spawning quite soon. They want to get as much precedence as they can to force their team to play around. I mean, just look at this vision up in the top jungle. So even if they do come to try and even contest the the, the Baron, I don't think you're going to get through that field of vision. No, you're not. And the, the Ainley have three pushing lanes as well. At least my... At least might be in a little bit might trouble, be going though. down here. Oh, but misses the cocoon crucially. Probably not going to get the burst combo down. Teleport's going to save flesh. her. All right, yeah, the teleport coming down. So maybe Yorion or the Kled. I'm not sure if the coming down. The Kled is just going to melt through them. In the other. Maybe she still does have Repel and the Zhonya's or... Uh, I can't quite shoot the, the knockdown, but we got the Galliwell with the re-engage the... Jarvanoth is coming down. There's just so much stuff happening in this little corridor. And we've got another TP coming down. Oriana's looking to pick up some kills, but unfortunately, with the shockwave, you hate to see it. And that's going to be the pickup from the Tristana diving under the tower. Going to finish off this fight. And that is Ainley picking it up huge. Going to be able to probably Ooh. transition this into a Baron, but no! The turret shot comes down. They're still going to get the kill here, but there's a lot of shutdown gold on the Tristana, but they still have full control here. Probably going to take top turret and then set up for the Baron. If, okay, we haven't seen a lot of team fights, but we've seen a lot of collapses. So uh, at first it was Kled who got caught out, and now it was Elise who got caught, caught out in the side lane. She was able to buy time with her repel, and uh, to allow this Galio and the Kled to come in to kind of back her up. While Chisana, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's poor Horde. <laughs> it's poor Horde. And Chisana, she did lose her life. To this, uh, to the Kaisa, who now has the collector, who is able to have the five percent execute. But again, you saw how Tristana was just able to jump around uh, around that fight, making sure that she was able to get the maximum amount of damage that she could. And Galio, his taunt was able to buy a lot of time as well for the rest of his team to arrive. And you can see how they're uh, aiming to- Oh, we're gonna they're pick going up a bottom lane fight, here, actually. pulling out onto the Thresh. The Nautilus is looking for the lock up here. They got the flank coming in from the Kled. Got the bear trap on a rope and gonna pull the Thresh back and take up a pick here. And that's another crucial pick being given away by Jasper here. And Ainley is just looking to set up take over vision control here. And uh, when, when, when's Dragon spotting there? Dear Observer. It's spawning 11 seconds, seconds so yeah they're probably going to transition this into a thing they don't have their thresh here to keep their kaisa alive the kaisa does have the collector as you said so a decent bit of damage here but i still don't think they can take a fight here it's a 12k gold gold lead in the favor of Jarvan, do not walk off no, no please 
Not, not only do you instantly die, you do not outsmite the level 13 Elise. <laughs> and that's an easy yeah. dragon tick in there. And securing the soul too. And just look at the size of those shields. I don't think they're going to go down in 18 fights here. And there's just all oh, the big Stop. flash of two going down the shield from all melting away and that's a huge kill picked up from mainly here they're going to transition into the baron and likely just pick a lane and push it to the end because simply put jasper place cannot fight them anymore yeah i talked about how oh here we go speaking with i go to take a sip of water and we got a fight down in the mid lane here but they are at numbers disadvantage you're on off locking them down but the cled re-engage is too much and it's the uh, flexing it oh my goodness i lost track of it because they're instantly killing them and a huge kill by the Elise and the Galio to pick up that fight. I mean, they can go for Baron, but I don't even know if they need it at this point, but they're going to take it just to be safe. They're going to run it down a turret because, I mean, you see what happens there. That was a really good pick up by Jasper Place, but because they're just so far ahead, I keep making this dumb joke, but they just keep slapping them with their wallets. They're too strong. You really can't fight them at this point outside of incredibly big mistakes, mainly two, which even then, I don't know if it's going to do the difference. That is just a pretty good summary of what has happened this game. Well, I, I, was, I talked about how um, Elise, she does fall off a little bit uh, in the later stages, but uh, Ainley are proving me wrong right now. This Elise is 12-0-6, no deaths, perfect KDA. She, she has been it, landing these c crucial cocoons onto uh, the, cr uh, the crucial carries, such as the Kai'Sa, as you saw with the flash cocoon right there. And she's been staying relevant in the sure that her team is able to get these picks yeah exactly and because she is so snowballed ahead being level 14 well i think the next closest level is 13 on the enemy team she is sitting at 12 and 0 has a ton of gold so the elise is just oh, super no. strong but you know speaking of picks here's another one probably coming down onto the kaisa gonna get the taunt up there gonna go who doesn't even need it there's a sheer amount of damage coming out and we have a pick down there we have a pick onto the thresh and this is probably going to be only two picking a lane and running it down to the end of the game with those two crucial picks onto the bot lane coming up couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> like you could see how uh, Ainley too, they're, they're kind of splitting their attention between the mid lane, getting the mid lane push right there. And also the spot lane uh, with the Scalia, having Elise hover in between the two lanes, making sure that, well, uh, her team is safe. Actually, they might be looking for a dive at this point onto the Ord, but I don't- I mean, Yeah, they just got so much gems coming down. Now the Ord is a tanky boy, but not a lot of Too things can stay tanky against a 13-0 Elise. And that's just so much damage coming down between the Galio and that. And as you see in mid lane, they're just taking the turrets down, big taunt coming down. But because they are disadvantaged, they don't want to take that 4v2. Even if you got the 6-1 for Stana, you, you can win that fight. I'm going to be honest, but you got to do it perfectly. And instead of risking that, just backs off, lets the bottom lane push in. And they are in a rotation to be able to just go on top and they got all three lanes pushing in with the baron buff utilizing this to its max extent and you see that jasper place is going all towards bottom and that gives cled free turret up in the top the thresh is responding but i don't think that's really enough to scare away the guy on the lizard and they're just <laughs> melting the turret down to the bottom lane here and it is honestly just mainly to slowly weeding it in here probably going to force one more big fight here because jasper place doesn't really have a choice <clears throat> and i'm just going to save my breath for that yeah, the or if we haven't seen a really going in here. Over they're over there, but... All right, got the lockdown on to the Kaisa early on, and that is crucial, but they're backing off, letting the turrets do as much damage as they humanly can, but the turrets are dying as quick as Jasper Place is right now. And a big or all coming down, but doesn't do quite a lot. And then they're just going in, looking for that engage. It's the Cled all coming down. They're going to pass those KDAs, but a huge engage coming down for Jasper Place, and they're just melting down everybody. But actually, the Kaisa is uncontested on the bat line here. He's doing so much damage, but they're just finishing off the game during the team fight. And even though Kaisa was managing to get so much damage down there the nexus just dies too quickly and that is only two taking a clean victory over jasper place one yeah and that last little team fight right there i did notice how uh oriana she was able to get off this four-man shockwave but she didn't do any damage she didn't have the items she didn't have the gold to back it up and the rest of the team it, uh, it was just fair that little but at the end, it was just very scrappy. There was no way that Jasper Place could have been able to take him down Ainley with, because of how ahead Ainley were. 
Exactly. And I mean, like, there's a few things we can kind of break down, but it's kind of just came down to that early game Elise pressure. She got her lanes pushing, but I think the most crucial thing to look at was that early level one engage, like the, when uh, the Tristana and Nautilus hit level two, they got oh, that yeah. kill, secured it down, and then just ran that snowball the rest of the game because their Elise was fed and their Tristana was fed, and they really played around that. And obviously, there's a ton of just lane pressure coming out from the Clud as well. Anley picked a very strong comp. They knew how to play it, and they just ran away over the end. Is there anything you want to talk about here, or would you like to go to break? Also, I don't think there's anything that I have to talk about because Ainley were just executing that, that game so well. Alrighty, well, on that note, we will go to a break and the match after will be Osborne 1, Zert 1. Stay tuned. <laughs> 